Okay, so I just finished StarCraft 2 Horror of the Swarm, and uh, I played through it, did all the missions, uh, played it on normal, so here is my honest thoughts on it. It was okay. It wasn't spectacular, it wasn't as good as Blizzard were making it out to be. I'm going to say right now that this is going to have spoilers. So, if you don't want to be spoiled, then I suggest you look away. Now, what is it with the game that makes it just okay? Honestly, it's because of a lot of the stuff, it's either done poorly or it just doesn't work. The story, compared to Wings of Liberty, is very poor. Because in Wings of Liberty... You felt that you were actively doing something. You felt like you were helping, and of course you had all these side missions. In Heart of the Swarm, it just felt like one big mess. And there was very little exposition in anything. Like, there's a scene where Zeratul meets up with Kerrigan, and he's like, Ooh, go to this planet and receive the power, blah, blah, blah. But he never says how he found that out. And, like, he's only there for... I think he's only got, like, two scenes. Whereas in Wings of Liberty, he had, like, one scene and an entire mini-campaign focused on it. And it's like... It, there's a plot hole as well. I mean, it's like, why doesn't... Why doesn't uh, Zeratul or Jim show Kerrigan the memory crystal that Zeratul gave, uh, you know, Raina to show her... What'll, what would have happened? You know, just to explain what what they're going to be fighting. Another one is, right at the beginning of the game, it appears, as I said, this is spoilers. I, I'm just saying because this, this, this is a really big spoiler. Is that it, it appears that Jim Rayner gets killed. He gets cornered by Nova, and you hear a gunshot, and so you assume that he got killed. Now, this, if Reyna was killed off outright, then he would, you know, it would be a very good, yeah, you know, it, it would make a constant revenge thing. It would make Kerrigan's rage and turning back to the swarm seem logical. But then they reveal that, no, as a matter of fact, Reyna's alive. He's just being captured because he's being used as leverage. But, here's the thing, Kerrigan mentions, like, partway through when he's at, when she's at this weird planet to re-become the Queen of the Blades, she says that she's willing to sacrifice everything. That means that she should also be willing to sacrifice Reyna. So, it should have been when Mink said, if you attack, um, freaking, if you try to attack me, I'll kill Reyna, she should have said, well... I already sacrificed my humanity, so go for it. But it's like, I don't know. I mean, another thing is that when Reyna is saved by Kerrigan and he sees what she's become once more, he gets really angry and just says, they're done. Their friendship's over and everything. And then he turns her. There is literally no scene between them. All he does is just watch the screen as Kerrigan announces that she's going to attack and he's like, okay, I guess I'll forgive her and go and attack Manx. I mean, I understand they got common ground, but they never talk about it. And then at the very end of the game, they're friends again. And it looks like they've still got that relationship thing. It's just like, ugh. So that's my problem with the story. It's a convoluted mess compared to Wings of Liberty. The next one is Kerrigan herself in Pretty much every single mission you play, you are controlling Kerrigan. You know, she's your heroic unit. Because the entire campaign revolves around her. Revolves around her growing stronger. And it's meant to emphasize this. This is why that she can... You know, she's got all these abilities that, done a, that does a ton of damage. And she can withstand a ton of hit. This would be all fine and good in a MOBA, but this is StarCraft, 
This is a real-time strategy. You don't revolve the gameplay around a single heroic unit. Sure, you can have extra units to help, but for the most part, so long as Kerrigan's not getting hit, she's going to be doing all the kills. And, you know, the times when it, that isn't the case, this brings up to my third complaint, the game is too easy because it revolves around Kerrigan. If you're being attacked, all you do is just throw some cannon fogger. The AI will focus on them, and then you just use one or two of Kerrigan's abilities. Because she regenerates energy to spam her abilities very, very quickly. And another way to show that it's very easy. There's a mission very early on where you have to prevent seven Protoss shuttles from reaching a warp gate. Now... The bases are meant to be very heavily defended, so you're not meant to, like, push in to attack. It's a viable option, but it's meant to be a high-risk, high-reward thing. There was no risk whatsoever. I was able to... I had, like, I think, an army of around 76, you know, a mix of roaches, hydras, and swarm greens. That, that's also another thing that irritates me. There's no in-jet lava in the um, single-player thing, which... Seriously makes it 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 don't make it difficult. It just makes it annoying. I mean, I understand it's probably similar to the original Starcraft, you know, where you had to build multiple hatcheries, but it's just annoying. But um, the point is, I just took these seventy-six units and just a moved. All I did was a move, and then when there was an occasion like an Archon or a Colossus, I just had Kerrigan use one of her moves, and it pretty much killed it in one shot. And, and then I proceeded to destroy the launch pads and won the game prematurely. It's just... I understand I'm playing on normal, but in Wings of Liberty on normal mode, I actually did... There were a couple of times where I only just managed to... I mean, like, the final mission, all in, in Wings of Liberty. Even on normal mode, that shit's hard to do. You are constantly nearly overwhelmed, especially when Kerrigan attacks you. In the final mission of Har the Swarm, it was it, it was easy. I just spammed all ultralisks and hydralisks, and just a moved my way in there. That was it. There's another reason. It's because of how you can evolve the swarm, because you got these small evolution things, and then you got full evolution, which basically makes an entirely new strain, like um. There's one where, instead of two Zerglings uh, per egg, you get three Zerglings per egg and they hatch almost instantly. Or Bailings, which can, which can jump up and down cliffs and leap at units. I basically got the Ultralisk upgrade that was similar to the 4 upgrade from Wings of Liberty, where if the unit dies, it revives. And this again comes back, but here's the thing. Before, I believe, had like 10, 15 seconds before it revived. And I believe what damage was dealt to it carried on. And it only got... Just, I think it was every... T if it revived itself once, that was it. In Har the Swarm, it's about 5 seconds for the wow. Ultralisk to revive wow. itself. And that's my dog's barking. And it can be used every 60 seconds. Now, if you've got like 10 Ultralisks, and the rest are Hydrals and Kerrigan, if an Ultralisk dies, by the time you've cleared them all out, that's it. You know, they're, they're, the, the Ultralisk is going to respawn, and by the time that gets to low health, because it's going to be at the back of the pack, its cooldown will already have refreshed. There was a point where I had four Ultralisks charge into like four Siege Tanks, a 20, 20, um, 20 marines and a couple of um, goliaths. And when one died, you know, it basically was in order. One died, and then when that one got back up, another one died and started reviving. And then when that one revived and another one died, it just, it wasn't, it was too easy. So, yeah. I mean, the game was the game wasn't bad. I'm gonna say that now. It wasn't bad. It was just, it was okay. And I would really like Blizzard to 
like take it on board and not do something like this again because it's just it I was looking forward to this game. This was like one of the games I was really looking forward to. But the game is just okay. It's it's less than Wings of Liberty. I mean, I understand that it's hard to beat Wings of Liberty, but it's just it's just classified as okay. That's not good. It should be considered at least good, but no, it's okay. So, uh, yeah, that's my thoughts on Harvest One.